Question was whether uh, Nikola Karabatic will be playing the Olympics if he's so important for the team still. This uh, killing me inside. It's hurting me a lot. Now I'm 28. I'm ready to uh, to lead this team. Ball across to Dylan. Now he double in flight. Oh, what a start! Ooh, into the net. He does it again. Yes, I'm going to work. On the champions of Europe. It is time to talk handball again, and we are back at full strength. We are recovered after that men's EHF Euro 2024, um, and we will be joined by a great guest today. But in the meantime, I still have to introduce these two boys that are with me here today, with me, Ben Kunkel. Uh, on one side, we have a saying in Germany, and that is saying we will never be back together this young. And it is actually true, uh, because he is uh, going fast-paced towards the 40, ladies and gentlemen, Victor Thomas. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot say you're not uh, right. I cannot say that's not true. Uh, <laughs> but feeling great, feeling great. That is uh, good to hear, good to hear after uh, your last week's break. And the one uh, that actually uh, spent this break with me is the guy who used to make uh, Beyoncé jealous because of his thick and uh, long blonde hair, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Martin Wilstrup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, the, the drawing you did, you know. And uh, yeah, we don't forget about those ones. And I was also about to say the guy who's going to have a hell of a lot of fun in the weekend going to the to the carnival in uh, in in cologne and uh the party's still going on you know in cologne and uh i think that yeah. you're you're looking uh, looking forward to uh to closing down the the cologne festival or not festival carnival actually yeah it's actually it's the uh, longest carnival festivity yeah. ever <laughs> three months, <four> months. <laughs> yeah uh, somewhere in that direction party never stops in cologne man party never stops uh, just uh, in for some apple juices and for some uh, decorations here uh, because uh, yes, carnival you know. is on in cologne actually yeah and uh, i have been out uh, yesterday for for the first carnival uh, opening uh, it's always uh, thursday till tuesday but only the real real hard ones uh, can actually go for all those six days um and uh, I'm not that kind of guy, uh, but I uh, am having myself one hell of a time right now. That is uh, that is for sure. Uh, but Victor, actually, you're back. We need to talk about your health condition. How are you? Uh, I'm better. I'm better, but I don't know. I got something uh, quite strong because uh, I'm still not feeling hundred percent. Oh Jesus! I don't know if you. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. I'm still coughing sometimes and having some uh, yeah problems but uh, yeah the spanish sun sun it's going to be the best cure for me <laughs> 22 degrees or where oh. are you guys right now uh, i'm not sure how many degrees are we but it's sunny and it's uh, warm which uh, is nice, we have but it's not nice because we have a really, really big uh, problem with the water here. Oh, actually, that's uh, not too good. Yeah. So we have yeah. snowing in Denmark and a Danish snowstorm maybe coming in from where I'm living, minus one degree. Oh, crazy times crazy times that we're living in um but it is crazy times for the guy that we are actually about to introduce into this podcast because uh he has basically just won it all let's get him into our show uh, because he's the one and only he's european champion he is world champion he is olympic winner and he is the mvp of the men's ehf euro 2024 ladies and gentlemen nedim remili nice to see you hi hi guys how are you feeling? Uh, how did you recover from the Euro celebrations? Uh, actually, pretty well. Uh, I thought it would be harder than this, but uh, actually, I feel really good, in good shape. Uh, Preseason helped me a lot, so even this uh, European Championship was tough as hell <laughs> and really long. Uh, but at the end, uh, we start very quick uh, this uh, game against Trugo in Hungarian League. Then uh, we had to be ready really quick and uh, we're already ready to, to prepare. We are preparing already in a new tough game against Tatabanya uh, tomorrow. 
Yeah, fair enough. Um, but on the other hand, uh, maybe uh, we will go over to, to Vesprem and talk about Vesprem in a little bit as well. Uh, but at first, uh, I introduced you as the European champion. I introduced you as the MVP. Um, maybe you can uh, take us with you for a, little, uh, for a little journey through your final day. How did you experience that final day? Oof. Um, actually, uh, I don't know what to say. Just... Just focusing, you know, we were just focused about this uh, uh, this final against Denmark. We lost uh, the year before this uh, World Championship against them. They actually beat us really easily, we can say. Uh, so we prepared this very well. Uh, I didn't expect to be MVP, to be honest. Uh, I didn't think about that. We were just thinking about how we can we can win this European, uh, this all that matter, to be honest. Uh, so MVP is just an extra. And uh, yeah, we... We have done it. We have done it and pretty good. Um, I think we deserve it. Uh, if we watch the all, all European Championship, this journey was amazing for us. We didn't lose any game. Uh, of course, this draw against Switzerland uh, makes scare everybody. But uh, at the end, I think we played very well during the all Championship. Uh, we became stronger and stronger every game. And uh, we arrived in this final with a lot of confidence. And it makes a difference for sure. Hello, Nadim. It's uh, really nice to have have here uh, with us. Um, in the last 20 years, France has been almost all the time on the top. Oh, okay. If you are if you are not moving, then the lights are out, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So in the last 20 years, France has been on the top almost all the time. And a lot of really, really good players uh, have go through the, the the national team. How did you leave this weight on your shoulders to be the starter playmaker, center back of the of the team? I know that you have been uh, having this transformation. I wouldn't say from the right back to the center back because you still play also in the right back. But how do you feel this weight on your shoulders? of having the centre-back starter in France, in the Fr French national team? Oh, it's a, it's a chance, the big chance for me. Honestly, it's even an honour. Uh, everybody knows that this uh, position uh, uh, went to, to Nicola during 20 years for our goat to uh, any of us, I guess. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure, it was uh, a lot of honour, but it was heavy. And especially in France, because our our fans are not that easy with us. Um, and we came after the, the generation called the expert, the Les Experts. Uh, you know, this team who won everything. Uh, we won every medal two or three times. Uh, so this transition made, um, we knew that we need a playmaker, for sure. Uh, we got amazing player potential in our team, it's unbelievable. I think we, we can even be better than what we, we have done during this European. Uh, but we need someone to, to be on this position. And uh, uh, I think I got, I got the shoulder to do it. Uh, I think my teammates trust in me a lot, uh, the coaches as well. And uh, that's helped me to, to deal with this pressure. All right. Um, it's not easy. Oh, sorry. It will happen a lot. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh guys, thank you. Uh, it's not easy to be honest. Yeah, sure, it's not easy. It's not easy to be middle back in national team, in the French national team, because of what uh, Narcisse, what Nico, what Jackson Richardson have made before. Uh, but thanks to to my teammates, thanks to my coaches, uh, I'm not alone. Uh, of course, I'm starting in the middle back position, but uh, I'm dealing the offense with Dika. I'm dealing the offense with Prandi, Nicola Karabatic as well, helping a lot. Quentin uh, Mai, even if he's play not that much, he's always uh, helping us on the bench. So, yeah, we are we are dealing with the attack with all together and uh, trying to create the best for the team. And it works well for now. And how, because from your early times when you started as a professional in Creteil, and then after that, you went to Paris, uh, Kielce, and now Vesprem. I think especially in the first seasons in Creteil and in Paris, I think you were a completely different player than you are right now. You were more defined as a shooter, as a, as a, as a player that could shoot maybe 15 times in a, in a game. And now your, your, your game has evolved. And in my opinion, you are a much better player right now. How was this 
this evolving you know it was more mental it was uh, any coaches had a lot of impact in your evolving tactically uh, how could you define this um it's a lot of things uh first of all since i start handball i always made a lot of things uh not just only shoot uh since i was young uh on the youth national, national team on the youth team in crete uh, i always play middle back as well uh I like to have the wall. I have to be honest, between my hands, that's true. <laughs> you saw that, you saw that the last month. <laughs> and uh, I, I like also to take decision. And uh, it's not, I know that if I, want to, if I wanted to help my team, it wasn't just about shooting and scoring. Uh, I think we, we need this for sure, but it's not what makes difference. It's not what makes uh, Nikola Karabatic better. I mean, the best. Uh, I think it, he can score from far. Uh, he still can score from far, but his impact on the game was uh, because he can make the difference for his teammate as well. Uh, he can uh, uh, break the defense through, you know, and this is what I've learned coming to Paris. Uh, of course, obviously, you was talking about my first year in Paris, but uh, when I signed in Paris, uh, no Casada, she just told me, hey, don't think about defense, don't think about passing the ball, just shoot, don't worry. Uh, right now we need you to shoot, just shoot, and the thing will come. He exactly told me, sorry for him, but he told me, if we learn, uh, uh, if we taught to Kim Anderson how to play defense, I think you can, you can learn it as well. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I learned it just playing next to them, uh, next to Nico, next to Narcis, uh, next to Miki, uh, Mikel Hansen also. Uh, yeah, we... I just watched them. I just watched them. And then uh, Raul came also in Paris and uh, taught me a lot about tactics, Spanish tactics. Uh, you know, Victor, how is it? Uh, so I'm just like, a, I'm just like a sponge, you know, when you do something in front of me, I'm just watching you uh, learning and then I'm trying to do uh, uh, on my own. Because, uh, yeah, hi Nadim, nice to have you, first of hi. all. Uh, I Because Victor spoke about the transition going from right back to the playmaker and you said yourself you like to, you know, make the decisions. For me, it also became very clear that I think your connection with the line players are pretty remarkable. You know, you, you all also have pretty good line players in the national team, also in Vesprem, actually a lot of them. But how do you see this up? Because it seems like when you're playing playmaker, you have more assists. Obviously, Fabregas is a is a nice play, a nice line player to have there. Also, Pichmelberg, Nilsson, and also Tona on the on the national team. How do you see the connection between yourself and the, and the line players? Because sometimes you get in a two versus two situation. Yeah, I learned it very soon. Uh, uh, I always like to play uh, with the pivot, uh, with the line player. Um, and uh, when we were young in Crete, we got one coach who, who was really friends with Luca Ballot. So he went to, I remember, he went to Ciudad Real a lot and learned from Talent and uh, Raul as well, this two against two game. And in Spain, two against two games is the most important thing. Uh, this is uh, uh, when they got uh, Agina Galde, it was always like this, two against two, heavy pivots, you cannot move him, s s split the defense in two to, to find a way to, to, to pass the ball. It's always like that. And I just add it to my game it's so uh, and I mix it's so it with, boring. <laughs> it's so long, wow, it's so long too, oh my goodness. I, yeah, this is why some people say Spain, Spain doesn't play well, but they played their games and they, were, they went a lot to semi-finals thanks to it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, exactly. I, trying to mix this with my own quality, uh, I can shoot, I know I have big confidence on myself, so I know I can shoot a lot, uh, but I know also that my, my, my pivots are really good and of course, of course, it's not only thanks to me, thanks to them. Uh, but uh, we talk a lot. I talk a lot to them. Uh, I, honestly, I, I'm speaking a lot with them. Uh, Chiki, now I don't need to, to speak with him. I think he knows me perfectly. Uh, with Pesh Malbec, for example, when I arrived here, here, I asked him a lot. I asked him a lot to, to be ready, to always get to put the hand, and then this is my job to make the good pass, to, to make the good decision. But uh, it's always about communication and uh, working together. You so been, right now, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Victor. Sorry, sorry, uh, Ben. Right now, do you feel more comfortable playing in the center back position or in the right back? Um, I got this conversation a few days ago with Momo, Momi Rilic. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's 
it's not that important to me where I will play. Uh, I think right now my impact, uh, especially on the both team I'm playing, so national team, French national team and Vesprem, my impact will be more important in the middle. Uh, but if I have to go on the right back position, uh, I will try to play my game as well. Uh, I always said that uh, when I start to play in this both position, it was really hard to, to change my mind. Because when on your right back, uh, I always like to play for the others, but you have to shoot a lot also. Uh, because the middle back are going to create something for you, and when I come to the when I come to the middle position, I have to be able to create as well and sh still get this uh, danger, still be this danger for the for the defense. So still shooting and stuff, it's really tough sometimes. Uh, it's killing my mind, almost blowing inside. But uh, now I think I got the experience to deal with this, and uh, so I will not answer to this. I, I like both. I just want to be on the field. When the pressure is coming, I want to be on the field. That's it. And I mean, you did mention his name a lot already, uh, Nikola Karabatic. He uh, will end his uh, playing career rather sooner than later. Um, but you guys yeah. were able to actually win the trophy for him yet again, so that he can uh, actually finish off his uh, national <coughs> team play on a uh, on a complete high. Yeah, was that something that the uh, that the team was thinking about? Uh. Mm, I wouldn't say that. I mean, obviously in our mind, but deep inside, you know, we didn't say it, but obviously in our mind it was here, but this team has just want to win, you know? This team just want to to always win everything, uh, every time. Um, of course, we, we knew that it would be his last Euro, so we we did everything for him, but he doesn't like that. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like we talk to him about like a big brother or uncle or whole, whole grandpa because he feel like he's, I think he's feeling guilty when we say that, like he doesn't deserve to be here. He's just here because of who he is. And he doesn't like that. He's here because I think I'm, I'm agree with him. I think he's here in our team because we need him. We still need him. He's still important to our team on the field, outside, everywhere. So I wouldn't say we did this for him even if uh, personally uh, a little bit. Uh, but I just want to say that this is his legacy. And winning winning this Euro is just came from what they started with this uh, team, the Les Experts, and we are just continuing this, uh, this uh, French story. I don't know if you agree, Nadim, but uh, we've been talking about uh, Nicola during the championship, in my opinion, is the best championship that Nicola played in the last four or five years with the national team. Uh, it, 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 uh, let me count four five yeah. years. Yeah, probably. He, uh, the Olympics was amazing. Also, this uh, in Tokyo, uh, the impact he got also came coming uh, coming back. Sorry from uh, uh, from this uh, ACL. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was uh, amazing. Also, but yes, uh, it started very well. I mean, uh, Hondi finished the finished the game. Honestly, this Euro he finished so well. But at the beginning, it wasn't that good. And Nico, uh, yeah, this game against Germany was amazing. Honestly, the impact he, he got against Germany. Yes, he was consistent. Even if uh, he played some games, he played even 50 minutes. You know, he was still dying. Okay, the next day he didn't train. I have to be honest. <laughs> next day he couldn't train. <laughs> he was done. <laughs> but, but this is but what the better always do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. We were dying uh, on the next day, but him was chilling like, okay, guys, it's not for me today. But yeah, yeah like you said, I think uh, his consistency during the old tournament was uh, pretty amazing. Uh, he, when he was uh, when he was on the field, he always uh, brings something to the team. Uh, if it was some shots, some uh, some assist, or this uh, his ability also to to find the others. You know, uh, our left wing played very, very well also this tournament, uh, Deska and Nai. I think uh, Nico gave a lot of assists to them. Uh, his ability to go through the defense, what I was talking about uh, earlier, go through the defense and get these seven meters. Uh, this is so important for us because then the defense goes down and me, Dika, Melvin, all the guys can shoot uh, pretty easily. And I mean, you have uh, somebody someone... in the shower, right? <laughs> yeah, Mae went to the shower. He doesn't care about this ah, podcast. Ah, Kanta Mae. He can come and say yeah, hi if shower. he wants. Kanta, can you stop the shower? 
<laughs> but please let him dress first. Uh, that would be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. but, yeah. Say sorry. Say sorry, guys. I know. All good. All good. We we're, we're fine with the uh, with the background noise. It's uh, not too bad. Uh, actually, Ludovic Fabregas was the worst when it came down to background noises. He was sitting in the really? cafe, and uh, there was just the cutlery <laughs> falling down all over, and it's uh, that was horrible. <laughs> um, but oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, let, let's keep it at Nico for a second because uh, there's one question that comes to my mind straight away. Uh, when you say that he's still so important for the team, will he be playing the Olympics? Sorry, sir. Can you say it again? My uh, talk to me. I think uh... <laughs> he can join <laughs> us. He can join <laughs> us. Uh, that's uh, no way. Oh, here. oh, my brought some uh, a nice tool. Wait a second. Wait. Ah. Oh, ah. this is my. Uh, you see. <laughs> Uh, He's a man who can do everything. Wait, wait, yeah. No, no, so, uh, for everybody who's just listening and not uh, watching by video, um, Nedim is just given a a holder for his phone so uh, that he can relax his arm oh. a little. No, uh, I don't. Oh, okay, wait, wait a second. Sorry, guys. And we are trying okay. to. Mice. Oh, mice. Oh, nice. Okay, guys. Is that good now? Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Oh, bah, bravo, Quentin. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? Now I'm free. I'm free to talk. <laughs> Honestly. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, uh, question was uh, whether uh, Nikola Karabatic will be playing the Olympics if he's so important for the team still. Uh, yes, uh, I, it's not my decision. Decision for sure. But uh, and also we are only 14 players. Uh, but yeah, I think he's important. I think uh, uh, it. It's really crazy that we just put out uh, Timothée Nguesson from our team mm -hmm. during this Euro. Honestly, our team is amazing. And we let also Brie and Min at home. Can you imagine? Uh, this potential is crazy. Uh, but uh, I will not decide anything. It's not my, my decision, first of all. And then uh, still six months long. We never know what will happen during uh, also this... Uh, uh, this uh, schedule, uh, we're going to play a lot of games. Uh, hopefully, uh, most of us are going to be in this Final Four and Champions League. Uh, then this pre-preparation pre for the Olympics. So I cannot say right now who, if he will be there, but I hope for him, for his legacy, for everything he has done to us, he will be there for sure. Yeah, that is uh, totally fair. Martin, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to know, you know, now we spoke a little bit about Nicola. Uh, we we had spoke about him like the GOAT earlier. So now I'm going to switch it over to uh, to a little bit about the final. Because I wanted to know, you know, playing against Denmark, you have types at Skitzel and Pütlik. And yourself also, especially in the last minutes and also in the extra time, you came really physical and you went really hard in both offense and defense. Was that a tactical uh, decision from you before the game? Um, first of all, I think it's our main strength, this uh, physical we got and this mental and uh, the mindset of this team is always go through, uh, even if we're leading or be led by, uh, I don't know, four, five, six goals, we're always running a lot, uh, pushing uh, pushing the, the opponent until the end. Uh, I think this is the what we, we do the best. Every time we try to control a game or play a little bit lower, it's always bad for us. Uh, we need speed, uh, we need contact, we need physics, uh, physical, we need to be physical, sorry. Um, so we knew that uh, after the game we have made against Sweden, uh, amazing first half, uh, disaster second one. And then this overtime, I think we controlled the overtime uh, because of our mental strength, uh, of course, physically, but also in our mind. We, we knew that if we go to overtime with anyone, we will fight until the end and we can make difference on it. Uh, we've made it against Spain, uh, Sweden, sorry. Sorry, Victor. Uh, <laughs> we made it as well against Denmark. <laughs> yeah, bad memory for, we, for you this okay, January. It's okay, yeah. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. For once, I can forgive but, you. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, um, we knew that uh, Danish. If if you let them play, if you let them play like their games, we cannot do anything. The the uh, the way to pass the ball is too fast. Uh, Gitze, Pitlick, they are going fast in one on one. They can shoot from from nine, eight meters. Uh, this one on one are unbelievable. Defensively, they are pretty strong. Uh, the goalkeeper are amazing. They run a lot as well. So we knew that if we want to win the game. Um, we have to be with them like tight, a tight game until the end 
and then it will be uh, it will be the mental mental strong uh, strength sorry and uh, in overtime I think with with us everything can happen and we we really we really we were really uh, confident about this overtime really. And also uh, defensively, what I noticed throughout the tournament, you know, you often have Luca and you have uh, Ludovic Fabregas in the in the middle of the defense. And also, you said it yourself, you don't have Brie in this championship. Earlier, he also was really unbelievable in defense. And a guy that I actually find did really well was Conan, you know, coming in and also doing in defense, being aggressive, you know, and maybe a little bit, with all respect to uh, to uh, Luca, a little bit faster on the feet. Uh, but how do you see his <laughs> impact in the team? <laughs> <laughs> no, we we can be honest. Luca is not uh, Luca is not fast enough right Maybe now. <laughs> too old, too old. <laughs> but he's so smart, honestly. Tactically, he's yeah. amazing. Uh, it was a joke, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, like I think this uh, this trio with uh, Fabregas, uh, Luca, and Conan was perfect for us. It was uh, it fit very well during the whole competition. Uh, Ludo and Lulu, we know them. Uh, Ludo is a monster, defensively, offensively, tactically, everything, whatever you, whatever you want to say, he's a monster. Uh, and Luca is so smart. Next to him, he's so smart. And both of them, uh, they help us to 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 win uh, to win a lot of games. But now yeah. we brought we brought Conan, and Conan brings this uh, aggressivity in the good way. But this aggressivity, he's fast. He's helping everyone, everybody, and then can come back to his own guy. You know, he is amazing. He's moving very, very well. Maybe less tactically than Luca or Chiki, but with the aggressivity he put, uh, it's really important, especially uh, when you play against Sweden and Denmark. When we was uh, when we were saying just uh, earlier, so these three guys honestly made the difference for us defensively. I think this is why also Belasen made a pretty good tournament. Uh, he was really confident. He said that. He said that at the beginning. Always he, he tried to be, uh, you know, this uh, video guy. Oh, I know this guy is going to shoot on left, right. But then after a few games, he said, when Conor, Fabregas or Luca are here, when they put the hand, I go in the other side and I trust them. And this is this this is the, the success, uh, the, re the, the reason of our success, sorry, during this year. It's the confidence we got to each other. And after going to overtime twice uh, in the last two games for you, did you even have enough power to, to celebrate that victory? And uh, how did you do it? <laughs> the first oh, night was... Uh, yeah, they, obviously, of course. They <laughs> had the power, you know? <laughs> I, I saw... I was in a party. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they had a lot of energy left, I can tell you. <laughs> the champions, yeah, they know how to celebrate. Exactly, we're good on the field and also <laughs> out out of the field. Uh, but yeah, um, I mean the first the first minute, the first hour of, after the the final was terrible. Really, really <laughs> physically, it was hard because we fought like crazy. When, when okay, we earned it, but when when you, when you win, the the feeling it's unbelievable. It's hard to to compare to anything else. So you just you same time tired but happy, uh, dead but uh, full of energy. You know it's everything is mix, mixing up in your mind and it's really hard. But then after the party came, uh, the party started. A family come with us and uh, it was a long night and amazing one. Uh, so yeah, the celebration was as good as the European was. And then uh, it uh, went into a plane and you guys went home. Uh, it was probably the four of you uh, going back to Vesprem together. Uh, so uh, yourself, Conto Mahe, Ludovic Fabregas um, and uh, Hugo Desca. Um, how were you guys welcomed back uh, back in Vesprem? Um, actually, we didn't celebrate yet. We we want to celebrate together this uh, this weekend, <laughs> to be ah, honest. Nice. Uh, be because last uh, last week we just came, we uh, Momo gave us a uh, few days off, so we came two days before the Chugos game. It wasn't time to celebrate anything. Uh, we knew also that we're going to play Tatabanya the the week bef uh, the week after, so uh, we cannot celebrate really uh, fully. But uh, this weekend we want to celebrate a little bit, not too much, because you know Vesprem is a small city, so it's pretty pretty calm. <laughs> after two in the morning, you have to be at home. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think uh, also it's uh, pretty 
pretty good success with our team, all team. Uh, uh, Hungary, Hungary finished fifth. It was the best, uh, uh, the best ranking in the, of their of their lives. Uh, Sweden finished uh, with the bronze and also this uh, qualification to Olympics. So uh, Egyptian, our Egyptian, Egyptian brother won the African Cup. So yeah, we have we have something to celebrate for sure altogether. How long did it take you emotionally to uh, get back to West Brom? So I, I would just feel like uh, you are on that uh, trip with the national team and it feels like in a, a complete different world that you're living in throughout those three weeks. Um, how long did it take for you to uh, arrive back in West Brom? Um, honestly, not that long. Um, I knew that this game in Chugo could be a could be a trap you know last year we played against them and we won by one goal thanks to uh, rodrigo who made the last save uh we know it's a tough team and uh, and stuff so we i really uh get back my my mind really fi uh, very fast sorry to the to the game and to the vestrum team um because because I think we want to do something really great this season. We can do it. We have the the power to do it. Uh, we show sometimes that we can be really good, uh, but we need more consistency as a team. We are a new team. Uh, some guys just arrive. Uh, of course, uh, if we, if you watch the, the papers like this, it's an amazing team individually. But now we have to create this uh, this spirit, uh, this team spirit, this confidence between each other. Like I said. Uh, the, the French success came from the confidence we got to each other. Uh, the final of Dika is just the, the image of our team. He didn't play that well in the shoot, but he's still on the field and we still believe on him. And we knew that. Oh, sorry again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I talk about Dika and the light off. What happened? Oh. <laughs> no, but yeah, um, we knew he, he was like, sorry guys, first half is for me, but Come on, don't, don't apologize for anything. We knew you will come back. You know you will score the, the most important goal. Trust to each other. And I, I want, we want to, to create this as well here in this team in Veshprem. Uh, just trust each other, guys. It doesn't matter how many times you shoot, you miss. It doesn't, many times, it doesn't matter how many times you lose the ball. We trust you, do your thing, and the team all together. And so we have to start fast to, uh, to be ready for the next game because Porto is coming soon in uh, EHF Champions League. And we have to win all our games to finish second and uh, avoid these uh, last 16 games. So, yeah, we want to be in final four, we want to win it. So we have to start really early. Um, and, uh, yeah, especially you have just been talking about that first game last year after uh, back in the day World Championship. Um, and that was a kind of a trap. And it was, uh, if I'm not wrong here, your first game for West Prem, uh, because it has been... Uh, am I wrong there? Correct me that. Yeah, you're wrong. I mean, I, I was here, but on the, on the stand. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Against Gheorghe, you mean? Uh, this game against Gheorghe. Uh, yeah, well, uh, basically, I was just uh, willing to uh, uh, transition it over to your first year in West Prem. So uh, it has been uh, exactly a year. Bad transition, actually. but that's okay. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for throwing me under the bus okay. here. Uh, okay, he's, still... a, he's a tough one, eh? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, not an easy one, uh, but fair enough. Uh, fair now enough. Banked. banked. When you are commenting some games of Nedim, now you can go tough on him as well. I know. Yeah. I know. I I'm pretty sure Nedim. he'd already done it. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he'd already have done it. Okay. Uh, oh, maybe he lost the ball again. I can, I can hear that on my mind. Yeah. It, it's tough to criticize the MVP, though, because he obviously uh, plays a fair role there. Okay. Um, but anyway. Uh, it's way easier you... to criticize oh. the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> now, you if I miss a shot or a game, they're going to kill me. Huh? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, you set the standard high um, and you are trying to set the standard high with uh, Vesprem there as well. Um, but how would you conclude your first year in Vesprem? Oh, tough one. Um, like I said uh, a lot the last uh, couple of weeks, couple of months, couple, uh, yeah, couple of months, it's probably one of the hardest uh, uh, season of my career, the last one. Uh, first time I moved out of France, I arrived in Kielce. I arrived with a lot of, the, you know, these small injuries which let, who let you play, but still have pain every time. You don't know when you can be healthy, when you can pay, play 100%. Uh, so I never played really good with Kielce, to be honest. Then uh, this uh, World Cup came. I played pretty well, I guess. I made a pretty good one. But uh, I, I've heard that I have to move out of Kielce. Uh, this deal was uh, during this championship. 
Uh, I come back. I came back in uh, in Kielce. I stayed ten days in my house. <laughs> I cannot move. Just taking a walk with my dog was the most I can do. Uh, then I arrived in Kiel in uh, Vesprem, and uh, pressure on me. Uh, now you have to help us to win everything. Uh, tough one in six months. Uh, I'm not sure I'm this kind of mercenary who just came and win and leave. I'm not like that. I need time, like uh, most of the guys. <laughs> so yeah, I came also with those the small injuries. I've pain everywhere. Uh, I didn't play that good. Also, I didn't bring what I I, I wanted to. But we won a uh, Hungarian League, Hungarian Cup. It uh, didn't happen uh, on the last uh, four four years, I think, here. So it was pretty much pretty good success. But being uh, disqualified by Kielce in quarterfinal hurt me a lot. I was there six months ago. I was playing with them. I knew them perfectly. And they beat us also really easily. Uh, drew at home and uh, seven or five, six or seven goals there. It was tough. Then I saw this team, Kielce, going to, to the final of the Champions League. And I was, uh, it was really painful for me. So, yeah, it wasn't a good, a good season for me, honestly. It was a disaster, if I have to be honest. But then uh, I'm happy because so, I, I work really hard this uh, preseason. Sorry, sorry. So the, the the way that this transfer happened, uh, Besprem uh, after Omar got injured, they paid a lot of money for for your transfer, and then you went to Besprem. You felt that pressure. Uh, but talking to you, I don't know you that much as a person, but talking to you, uh, I, I can see or I can feel that you deal quite good with the pressure. But uh, the way that this transfer happened uh, with Best Prem paying maybe one of the highest amounts that has been paid in Humboldt so far, maybe the transfer from Nico from Barcelona to Paris was higher, but it was a lot of money. This, this, this put it more pressure on you when you arrived uh, in Besprem, or it was only the pressure that you put it to yourself to help the team? Um, I think it's more the pressure I put to myself. I'm always putting a lot of pressure to myself. Um, uh, I think I cannot, uh, I cannot be lazy anymore. Uh, I'm 28 years old. Uh, now I earn this MVP. Uh, like you said before, I won a lot of things uh, with the national team, but I want to win this Champions League. This feeling, this is something uh, I almost feel guilty to not, uh, to didn't win it yet, you know. Uh, it's on my, it's on my heart. It's inside, you know. Uh, and uh, so I put a lot of pressure to win it. And uh, coming to Vesprem at the half of the season was really tough. Uh, of course, I felt. I have to be honest. I felt the pressure around this amount uh, of money, uh, the, the the way they paid it, uh, as fast as they, they have done it. Also, it was. It was tough when in the middle of the season when I arrived here I got this uh, presentation uh, introduction in front of the all uh, arena all crowd uh, full of uh, of red jersey and uh, feeling like they were screaming my name but they were more like hey now show us show us what you got you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, best it's a difficult it. place best prem it's a yeah, difficult best place because the the fans they support you a lot but they also have their own opinions about things and they start yelling the name of other players and it's a it's a difficult place also to play as a home player yeah that's true that's true honestly and uh i didn't know it before i came here but i felt it very very quickly uh but that's okay i mean it's not a bad pressure for me uh, uh pressure can be uh, only good for me it doesn't matter if uh, people is booing me or sharing me <laughs> that the same. I just like it. I, I, I just like the pressure. I feel, I feel better when I say it's pressure. I just said the Momo earlier. He wasn't happy, but uh, I said I'm better yeah. when there's pressure. Sorry. <laughs> when it's too calm, I'm not good. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, exactly like you said. So, so, um, then the, so then you cannot play in Barcelona for the Asobal Leagues, you know? For the Asobal League not games. Be the, I will never be the MVP of the Asobal Asobal League. Sorry, uh, neither here. I will never be the MVP yeah, of the Hungarian yeah, League. Yeah. Maybe the Hungarian <laughs> final, but not the Hungarian League. No way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, but still, there is a lot of pressure actually um, for the team there as well uh, because the the latest transfers uh, they do get you the impression that this team is built to win the Champions League and that is the huge dream and the way that I introduced you as the the Olympic champion as the uh, world champion as the European champion there was one title missing is that the last one uh, that you're looking for in your cabinet there as well good transition to each other you know we help each <laughs> other that's good <laughs> finally but 
Finally, finally, <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not that tough, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, Champions League. I mean, uh, Victor can talk about it better than me because I never won it. But this, this is for me the most uh, difficult title to win. Uh, being good during two weeks, uh, it can happen to a lot of guys. Uh, I will not say everyone, but to a lot of guys. But be, being consistent until the end, like until the final four, and then to the final four, be really good or amazing during two days. This, uh, this is something like I never done, to be honest. I've been good uh, during a few months, few weeks, maybe uh, almost a year, but never won it because I wasn't good enough. I mean, uh, I feel so this uh, killing me inside. It's hurting me a lot. Uh, but this is also what gets me better and better. This is why now I'm so happy uh, about this European, this extra, uh, this MVP, uh, because I feel like now I'm 28. I'm ready to uh, to lead this team, uh, not alone, obviously, huh? but uh, Vic, you will understand me, but to lead this team until the end. And uh, if the guys trust me, and I think they do, if the coaches trust me, and I think they do as well, uh, we can make a great, great thing this season. Uh, the fans as well have to follow us. And, uh, you know, with this Red Army, we can do a lot of amazing stuff. But uh, now we have to show it. We have to show it. So, talking about the pressure and the Champions League trophy, uh, as you know, the history of Besprem, they, they never won it. And, and, and they have been in the Final Four so many times, sometimes being the favourites, some other maybe not, but always with chances to win. Do you feel in the atmosphere in Besprem, uh, when you are playing Champions League, that the people is really willing that this is the year because I think that you have the, the deeper roster of the whole competition. Uh, in my opinion, you were my favorites from the beginning and uh, you still are. Uh, so do you feel in the atmosphere this, this pressure? Oh, in not actually careful. <laughs> no, but I have, to be, I have to be honest with what I think. Of course, I think that Barca... Uh, can win some important games as they showed in, in, in Hungary, in, in Besprem. But I think that your team is deeper than Barcelona's team. That's my opinion. Yeah, I think you're right. But I still think uh, Barca is the, the biggest favorite uh, because they have the confidence to each other. You know, it's a group who, who know each other from a long time now. And this is the most important in, uh, in sport. Uh, this is not about... I played with the best, maybe the best, one of the best roster in the history. Uh, Narcis, uh, Karabatic, Sagosen, Ansen, uh, Gainsheimer. I played with this roster, you know, uh, back in uh, 2016, 2017 or 18, something like this. But we didn't, we didn't win it. We didn't win it because it's not about uh, the name you put on. It's about uh, the team spirit. It's about, uh, it's about the confidence. It's about a bit of luck. Uh, so it's more than that. So for me, Barca is still the, the biggest favorite, but of course we have our chances, uh, huge chances, I have to admit. And, but we know it and we feel this pressure. That's 100%. We feel it every time. Uh, we were leading against Porto by 11, 12. They came back at, uh, after they scored 4-0. Four, four and we, we heard our, fan, our fans booing something like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> we were still leading by 8. <laughs> But nobody's yeah. happy. You know how it is. The pressure is huge here. Uh, but that's good. It's a good thing. Uh, that means uh, they believe in us. They, be they really think that uh, we can do something amazing. And uh, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud to be about part of this uh, journey with this team. Uh, we believe to ourselves. Uh, we are, like just Now we have to show up. Show up during the, every game. Uh, doesn't matter if it's Hungary League, Hungary Cup or Champions League. We have to show up. Uh, getting better and better every day, uh, individually, uh, all together, and uh, yeah, make a great thing. And uh, now oh. that we are talking about the Champions League, and uh, you already said it, uh, the last game against Plotsk was a defeat uh, ahead of the Euro, uh, so ahead of the Euro break. Um, and especially if we're looking into the direction of the very last match day of the group stage of the Machine Secret Edge of Champions League, it is Magdeburg that you guys are facing. And uh, you guys did win the first encounter, but uh, Magdeburg has only lost against Barca after uh, that defeat against you. 
what's uh, what's going on inside your mind when you're thinking about that last match day? Uh, first of all, we have to win the three or four matches before uh, before to talk about Magdeburg. We have to think about Porto for sure, but Georgi as at home. Uh, they beat us as well there in Georgi. We lost the game uh, and they beat us completely. Like we never had the chance to win this game. And uh, it's been like uh, on the, the history of the of this of this group of this team. It's been like two three years. Georgi, it's uh, it's a mess. It's really a problem for this team. <laughs> and uh, we have to figure out how to beat them first. Uh, then we're gonna think think about uh, Magdebo. Uh, Magdebo is far away. Uh, first of all, we have to win all the, all their games to play this final against them to be second. I think because I don't think uh, Barcelona are gonna lose some some games uh, until the end of the of the group phase. Uh, so, yeah, before Magdeburg, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, beating Tatabania tomorrow, uh, we got some Hungarian game. Uh, we will have this Hungarian Cup as well, which is not really which is really tough in two days. So Magdeburg is not in our mind right now. Uh, being being serious against Porto uh, to make a huge difference on this game. Uh, improving as well, earning confidence, and then coming in at home against Georgi, it will be a big, big, uh, big game for us. Uh, so Georgi is right now for me the, the game on my mind, to be honest. Fair enough. And uh, that's where I would say, uh, boys, if you uh, have some closing questions, then this is your time to, to post them because we have been stealing a lot of your time already. I want to know before, because we had the, the media call, uh, you and me, Pinks, where at the European Championship, we ask uh, Tona, we ask uh, Nahi, we ask Huko, who's the worst football player in the French national team. And I want to, you didn't get the chance to say it. So uh, now you have the chance to, to say it, Nadim. Wait, did, did they say me? They picked me? No, 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 they didn't pick you. Oh, I, I won't okay, say who okay, they picked okay. until you say say your choice, but uh, I will tell the afterwards. I just want to hear your opinion. Um, we got a lot of guys who are really bad. Uh, but, uh, are we... <laughs> you really hate Timothy oh, Timo... Engesan, don't you? <laughs> I love Engesan. I love him. He, he's a really nice guy. I love him as a human being, as a humble player. I have huge respect for him. But he's so freaking bad playing football, <laughs> and he knows that. Uh, he's hiding in defense, so I cannot I cannot say anything. If the balls come, he oh. just shoot it. So, okay. but for me, because I'm playing with the young team, uh, our worst player is definitely Dylan. Dylan Nai. <gasps> <laughs> if, if we were, you know, if we were in the sorry. No, it's just because uh, Nahi he said Tona, and Tona he said Nahi. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in clash, you know, they're always fighting to each other. But Nai, Nai would be amazing if we play in a, in a real field, real football field, you know, because he yeah. can just push the ball and running so fast. He's the fastest guy I never met. He's the strongest and the fastest I never met. But when we play in this handball field, handball court, he, he cannot dribble, you know, he doesn't have any, he cannot handle the ball, you know, he doesn't have any skills. He's just pushing the ball, but uh, the the court is too small. So no, now he's. Uh, we played with him, but without him, he was against us. He was the second, uh, the third guy in defense for them. Uh, uh, no offense, uh, I love him. He's really my one of my closest friends of this team, but he's so bad. And I would like to know who is the worst in Vesprem. Uh, we don't play actually. We play only four times or five times football, but we play uh, this plastic ball. I think you know it. Uh, probably Victor, yeah, okay. you know, these yeah. two touches yeah. with plastic ball and I have a lot of names. We are leading by eight with the young team. So uh, Kantama is the best for the, for the old, for the, for the holders. But uh, who is, wait, I'm watching. Uh, Rodrigo, uh, Rodrigo. Oh, Rodrigo. Oh, Rodrigo is Rodrigo's on the side now. <laughs> yeah, he's on the side now. Uh, out, out. Ah, okay. They don't want him. But ben. Mikita, Mikita Vaipa, who is really bad also. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Uh, then I would say uh, best of luck for the rest of your season while Martin is uh, just uh, distributing some kisses towards his dog. Um, but <laughs> in the meantime, I would say uh, thank you for uh, sharing your time with us, sharing your insights. Uh, congratulations yet again for becoming European champion and the MVP of the tournament. It has been one hell of a tournament for you guys. Uh, enjoy it. Enjoy your celebrations and best of luck for the rest of your season. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you for inviting me and uh, good luck for this podcast. And be good when you're commentating me now. <laughs> we'll, see. Uh, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Nadim. Cool. Merci beaucoup. Thank Merci you, guys. Thank you. you. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Au revoir. Bye. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> uh, a great guest to talk to that is for sure uh, but look how he went back on his knees uh, to <laughs> be looking for that uh, gratitude when we uh, talk about him commentating games uh, no, no I don't want it I don't, I, honestly I'm, I'm, I'm not listening that much I'm not listening that much commentators no, no I like when you're screaming oh what a goal what a shot I like this kind but uh, about how the guy are playing well I'm not I'm not interested at all <laughs> I know my game. I know when I'm good or when I'm not. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, cool. Sweet. Uh, then uh, yet again, <laughs> see you around. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Uh, yeah, but a great guy to talk to. Nice guest. And uh, it was lovely to, to have him on the show here yet again um, because uh, he has just uh, so much to tell after uh, that Euro and especially looking forward into the direction of summer. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that he's also being honest. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about Nadim is he became the MVP of the EFF European Championship because I predicted him <laughs> being uh, the, the MVP of the Machine Chica EHF Champions League. And uh, it's not that often that you get the MVP of both championships, but... Uh, Maybe he will be happy to prove everyone everyone wrong here. But uh, yeah, I said it earlier. I think he's an uh, unbelievable player. Also, yeah. the connection. It's not that often you see left-handed uh, playmaker. You know, you, mm, you can say that maybe Nadim is probably one of the only left-handed playmaker. Then you have the younger one, the sleek line, who probably plays a little bit in Berlin. But normally, he wouldn't play playmaker because of injuries and uh, otherwise there's not that many Melvin, oh, Melvin are, Richardson yeah. in Barcelona Melvin, especially. Yeah, true true also Melvin but it's not that often that you see left-handed playmakers and and it also have an impact on the flow of the of the game because if you have a right-handed do you want to put pressure on from left to right and now you have a, a right a left-handed playmaker do you want to then change the pressure for wherever you want to you know have the have this chance at a shot. So um, yeah, it's, it's nice to see also, as Victor said, the way he's been, you know, transforming from right back and a shooting right back to actually, you know, be the guy who's setting up the, all the plays and, and, and the connection with the line players. Because I think it's a very difficult transition because uh, uh, tactically you have to uh change your game a lot because in this center back position you have to make your teammates play uh, and and for a player who 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 is used to shoot 10 to 12 times per game and to score a lot of goals to evolve your playing style like this in a in in a team like Besprem and now in France to have this impact on on, on the both teams and and to be the MVP of this uh, championship, which is, in my opinion, as you know, guys, the European Championship is the toughest in handball competitions. I think it's it's amazing how fast he made this transition of changing his mindset, uh, going from the right back to the centre back. Yeah, absolutely, and you can. Uh hear his fire whenever he talks about it um that he wants to win everything that he wants to win it with france uh, that he's uh, not there to be uh, yeah basically just the right hand of nikola karabatic and karabatic is not just there because he's karabatic uh, but because he helps the team and uh, they need him as a team and especially the way that he talked about the champions league uh, you could feel that he is willing to take that one home and uh, that he is ready to lead the team that's actually a sentence that I really liked. Uh, I'm 28 years old now. Um, I am ready to, to lead this Vesprem team to the uh, Machine Secret Edge of Champions League title. Um, but that will only come back next week. So I would say we have enough time to be talking about uh, the men's Edge of Champions League uh, as the season progresses. Uh, and I want to, uh, yeah, switch it off here a little bit right now um, and uh, give a little bit of a relaxing topic um, because, uh, Victor, you haven't heard about it yet uh, even though i uh, do have to ask did you listen to last week's podcast 
Uh, no, I did not actually. Oh, oh, uh, then you don't know about our new segment yet. Uh, it's no problem at all. Um, but oh, we, okay. uh, we are back to game I'm time. I'm and leading. Uh, <laughs> you're not leading yet, Martin. Cut it off. Cut it off. Uh, <laughs> Martin uh, started it off last week, and I uh, want you guys to play against each other. Um, you did get to know uh, the format uh, throughout our uh, Trivago Twitch show during the Euro, um, but now it's back. We're playing Who Am I? And we're playing Vilstrup against Thomas, uh, and I am very much looking forward to that. So I prepared a player yet again uh, that you guys uh, are able to, to have a guess about. Um, and I do want to make it a little bit more difficult for you. So uh, we will have an all-time leaderboard and uh, we are going to keep count uh, on who is leading and uh, who is better than the other one. Um, but if you answer with the wrong name, the point goes over to the other one. So uh, if you say, oh, I know it, uh, but hey. it's the wrong name, then uh, it is going to be the round for the other one. So, okay, uh, okay, because I was about to ask uh, how many hints do you get if the other one answers wrong, but now you just answered my question without yeah. even asking. I love it. <laughs> All right, Whoa. so we are back to game time and let's uh, kick it off here. Who am I? I am 21 years old. No guesses yet? No guesses yet? Surprising. All right. Um, I'm a Southern European handballer. Give you time to think about it, even though you don't know it yet, you can't. Uh, but uh, I play in the EHF European League. My team... I go for it. Oh, you, you're going to go for it right now. Oi. Yes. Jesus, go ahead. I have to say Martin before Costa. you say the name, Vitae. What, what were you about to say, Martin? I think it's uh, it's really, um, how can you say, um, bold to make a, a guess right now. So if he gets it right, I think it's well deserved. All right. So um, I play in the year. I know it's right. And I know he's right. I know he's right. I, can I, know. You I know it's right. <laughs> Martin Costa. <laughs> My team hasn't won the domestic league since 2017-2018. In the last season's EHF European League, I scored 102 goals. I debuted for the national team against Netherlands on the 14th of April 2022. I was part of the all-star team of the EHF Euro 2024. Uh, people often talk about me as the older brother. I became joint top scorer of the EHF Euro 2024. Wow. I'm a left back for sporting. Hello. My name is Martin Costa. Jesus, that was impressive. That was impressive, Victor. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, you was know nothing. what? Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you were just able to okay, tell okay. that it's Martin Costa by being 21 years old, Southern European handballer, and, and uh, when European you said when league. you said the second one, when uh -huh. you said the second one, I was really close to say go for it. But when you oh, said wow. the European League, I was sure. <laughs> that is nuts, because it could have been like uh, 40 different players there as well, at least. But well, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, good job, GG. Martin, any, any words uh, on your loss? Oh, I, I know, Victor, he knows himself that this is what's pretty good, you know, from him. So I'm not going to give him any credit for it, but it, it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it yeah. sucks to have you back. It sucks to have you back. <laughs> uh, I think it's great. I think it's great. And uh, we can uh, keep on uh, talking about actually uh, a little more of uh, handball action because uh, last week, uh, Victor, uh, not Victor and me, Martin and me, now I'm getting uh, all confused here, Martin and me, we did have some talks about the uh, EHF Champions League women that uh, has been played throughout the whole, uh, the whole men's EHF Euro 2024 there as well. Um, but it uh, is almost getting close to its deciding weeks. So uh, we have two more uh, game weeks left in the EHF Champions League women. And uh, we don't have an unbeaten team anymore because uh, Gyor actually lost it against Bucharesti. Yeah, uh, we spoke yeah. about it also. But you, you can go on also, Victor. But we spoke about it being it's pretty unbelievable, actually, because we're kind of expecting them to to um yeah go on undefeated and i especially losing in hungary against chesham bugaresti 
Although that I think that uh, Chester is a, is a really great team, but in Hungary, I would always say that you are the favorites. Yeah, uh, but actually, I was my 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 prediction for a winner this season was Chester and Bucharesti, and I was mm. like quite disappointed for the season they have been playing so far in Champions League, but. I, I I really think they have a great great team and a great potential. And when I saw this victory in uh, in Hungary, I thought, aha, uh -huh, okay, maybe they can get into some uh, good momentum and keep it going, and 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 let's see how far they can they can make it in this competition. Because I really think they have a very very good team. Uh, but of course, it was surprising. Uh, it's always surprising when Gear is losing at home. But would you say also, that this would be the the first sign of Gear uh, getting weaker or even saving their powers? Because uh, they are through. They uh, secured the the top spot in the in the group. Uh, nobody can take that away from them anymore. Um, will they just uh, be in energy saving mode right now? I... <sighs> I wouldn't say energy saving mode. I would say it was just a bad game mm -hmm. for from them, and 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 that's it. Um, Gior is probably uh, the deeper roster and the favorite team to win this competition, especially when it's played also the final four in Hungary. Uh, but the last seasons we have seen uh, an amazing Vipers uh, going there and 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 win it all. So I think that some teams like CSM Bucharesti and Vipers, they have woke up a little bit because we have seen also Vipers winning uh, uh, against uh, Esbjerg uh, in, in Denmark and then winning home against uh, Lubin. So and now Vipers is uh, number four in the, in the group and, and they will make it through, no doubt, uh, to the quarterfinals. So... Uh, to the uh, eight final, sorry. So there is favorites, but I think that the level of many, many teams in this uh, Champions League is so close that a lot of things can happen and it's so exciting. Yeah, Martin, you were about to say something there? I was just, I think just the way that um, Chesim, the game developed because uh, Chesim was leading, leading 16 to 9. You know, and leading with seven goals in Hungary, that's a big lead. And then Gio actually came back where it said, I think, 22-22 or something like that. So, you know, they fought themselves back. And sometimes whenever you make these kind of comebacks in the second half, then mentally you're, you're the team that's that has the upper hand. But uh, yeah, in the end, Chesham ended up winning with two goals and it was a surprise but in in general also as we spoke about banks we had a lot of great games in 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 in, in the in the round to just played and uh yeah it's also the first thought that i had when uh nadim also spoke about okay who can be the favorites for the for the men's champions league it can be the same for the women's also here victor said vipers we also have here we have Metz Edgeberg. and that's the thing first of all you have to make it to the final four and whenever you get there, okay, it's about who who can deal with the two days, you know, delivering, <clears throat> sorry, in a short period of time, and then yeah, just knocking it off. Um, so yeah. yeah. But which uh, which victory which victory surprised you surprised you guys more, uh, the victory of Chesem and Giot or the victory of Vipers in Esbjerg? I, I think um, you can't you can't ever say that a victory of uh, Vipers would be a surprise, even though it's against Esbjerg. <laughs> That's my feeling, at least. So uh, you have yeah, to go but, against uh, for the the undefeated Gjör. I would say it was still a surprise that uh, Vipers they won in Esbjerg. Also, you know, having in mind that um, the way that Esbjerg delivered, I think around that time. Uh, I don't know if it was in particular the game against Vipers with the Ishbia maybe had some some injuries, but I would say Chesham is the biggest uh, surprise because they won against the undefeated Gjör in Hungary. But of course, with the strength that Vipers had shown so far, then going to Ishbia to win, maybe that was a game changer for them because after that, as you said, they also won a couple of games and, and now they, 
they are dangerous, you know, they are a little bit of a dark horse, but I also know earlier this season, they struggled with the economy uh, and, and and dealing with that in general. Maybe that was also taking some of the focus from the team. And, and, and I think they have almost collected all the money they need. And now they can just focus on playing, playing handball. And, uh, but I would say Chesham is the biggest, you know, winning in Jura, it's not that often it happens. What would you say? Yeah, for me, it was more surprising that Chesame, but uh, we've been talking about uh, Vipers a lot in the in the podcast. I, even at some point, we spoke about if they would make it through the eight finals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that Vipers is Vipers and they have a lot of uh, really, really good players and, and they just needed a little bit more time to... Uh, get all together with a new project, with a new coach. And now, when a lot of problems are have have been uh, around the club with all these uh, economical uh, problems that uh, we all know uh, they have, they showed a lot of character and they 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 took their best game out of them. So I think that now, Vipers, they have nothing to lose, and 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 it's the moment where they are more dangerous. Yeah, um, and uh, we can have a look at uh, some winning probabilities because uh, handball data analyst uh, Julian Rux, he actually uh, went through 10,000 simulations. Uh, that always gives me some Doctor Strange vibes. Uh, I've seen 14 millions and 602 uh, possibilities how this fight will end. How many did we win? one and that uh, team who has just uh, won one uh, is actually ftc right now so they have a 0.9 percent chance of uh, winning the the ehf champions league women um and the vipers uh, they would be they would still be at 3.8 right now what i personally find is too low there because we're still talking about the back-to-back-to-back champions yeah, but uh, at this moment they are number four in their group, and uh, uh, I would say with very very few chances to to reach Icast. Mm-hmm. So I think this will be their position at the end of this uh, group phase, and probably they will have to play against uh, Chesame. Uh, so it does look like it right now. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I don't know if it's low or not, but uh, 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 coming from the point that we were talking about if they would make it through or not, uh, I think it's uh, fair enough at this point. And uh, the team that obviously has the, the highest chances are Gyur there, uh, who uh, just lost their first game. They're at 32.4%, uh, but that's still not even that high. So we're still talking about a one-third to two-third possibility uh, or probability that uh, they are going to win the EHF Champions League women. Um, and that just shows how close it is still. So, uh, I mean, they are the, the clear favorites right now um, with 32%. Um, next team would be Mets. Uh, with the seventeen percent there, sixteen point nine actually, and uh, after that followed by Odense with fourteen point nine. Uh, Martin, are you happy with those probabilities? Well, I think as you said, um, I think you are pretty clear favorites when you look at these kind of statistics because they almost have double the amount of percentage that Mets have, and yeah. I think Mets are pretty strong. Which I'm obviously from uh, the prediction point of view. A view super happy about because I I predicted them as being the winner, um, but uh, you know it's it's as I said before they can be presented about this and doing statistics about it, but uh, it's also about matchups in these last sixteens and then you have you know there will be quarterfinals that will be close. I also just looked at Bickenheim they lost at home you know and I've for themselves that was a big loss because if they have won that they will have equal the points with Brest and only be one point after Chesham okay I think they will play against Chesham in the in the next game but then they had to had it in their own hands now it looks like they will either play against Vipers maybe Ecast if they don't win any of the rest games you know so yeah percentage it's hard to say uh, I'm just happy about my predictions at the moment it's delivering and that's Mets 
Yeah, fair enough. Uh, talking about Bietigheim, um, they uh, lost their sweet spot, so uh, the only reason why they are still, uh, or why they were still able to compete for those kind of spots was that um, they were looking at uh, five victories to start off the competition, but now only having won uh, two points in the last seven games, and that is simply not enough. No, they're struggling. They're struggling. I think if I it's said it also occurs. earlier, they kind of for them. Yeah, yeah, but they also kind of had the season. Uh, the they started last year's Champions League the same way, and then ended up not making it through to the to the knockout phase. Uh, now they do, and uh, yeah, um, congrats to them. But at the moment, they're not in the team with the momentum, and uh, I think that's that's have a. That will have an impact on 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 um, who they're gonna face and the confidence that you're going into the knockout phase with. Because, okay, is there a team coming in winning the two or three last games, or is the team, as you said, it one one game out of the last eight or something like that? Uh, so maybe seven, maybe last seven, and last seven, yeah. you know, obviously, yeah, obviously that's that's not what they wish for, and and them playing against Scheffler at home, it, it should have been a win, but it's, it, it's differently. It's the Champions League. You can win or lose against anyone. And uh, I'm just looking at the opponents they can play against. And I don't see them as favorites when it, when it comes to against Vipers or Ecast. That's, yeah. that's what I can tell by now. But um, it's going into the last, you know, two matches of the group. And uh, that will make us everyone cl clever about who will have the face uh, matchup and uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting also because Ikas has to actually have a chance to to get a hold of Ishbear also for the second spot. I, f I think Odense uh, will take it or um, Chesem. I don't think they will get it, but let's see. Yeah, well, uh, Ikas is uh, facing the best attack actually in the EHF Champions League women. Um, and Ikas themselves having the second best attack. So we're looking at Mets against Ikas this weekend. Um, and it's uh, 411 yeah. goals against 409 goals. Victor, are you expecting uh, a high paced game with uh, many goals there? Or uh, is the defense going to go strong <coughs> for once? I think that both teams, they like to run, they like fast humble and uh, they like to score. And they have a lot of players that are able to, to score. So if I would have to predict, I would predict for a fast game and a high scoring game. Uh, but I, I have shown in the EHF Euro that I'm so bad predictor uh, sometimes. Uh, so I'm not uh, brave enough to, to predict now. But I would say it's going to be a fast handball game. Yeah, I think so too. It's it, it is, is one to look 39, out for. Thirty-nine, thirty-six for Ecast in France. So although that maybe uh, Mets would be the favorites for this one, um, we're having the momentum. But I know Ecast they won against Odense uh, in the Danish league with forty-three, uh, thirty-five or something like that. But scoring forty-three really goals a against big Odense. Victory. Yeah. yeah, big, big, big one. And they were leading with around 10 goals or something like that throughout the game. So, uh, yeah, they're coming into this game with confidence and playing in Denmark. You know, as Victor said, I also expect, uh, I don't know, more than 70 goals or something like that. That will be probably be my prediction somewhere <laughs> because they, they're going to run both of the teams. Um, but um, that's also a, a, a game to watch, you know, coming up. Um, and yeah. I am looking forward to it. Uh, we can have a look at the other games that are uh, about to be played this weekend. Um, so uh, you guys, as always, know a little more than we do uh, because we record on Friday. We uh, uh, yeah, come out on, yes. on Monday and that's why the games will already be played. Uh, Bietigheim tries to take it up on Chesame Bucharesti. Uh, the signs couldn't be clearer right now for Bucharesti, but... Bietigheim won the, the first encounter, so uh, that might actually be something to uh, have an eye on. Um, well, uh, Gior against uh, Scheffler probably won't be the most intense game that we're looking at, but uh, Esbjerg against Krim uh, might hold a surprise. That's uh, my conclusion here. Oh, you're going for a surprise there, you know, because uh, I was looking at something else here because... Uh, I have uh, Ferran Suarez playing against uh, Vipers. Mm -hmm. And let's say that Vipers win this one. 
Rapid, if they can go and win, uh, win, win against Lupin, then I also, oh, um, yeah, now I'm saying a lot of matches, but let's imagine that Ishbia wins and Mets also win. Then you have a situation where Ishbia don't have anything to play for. Rapid yeah. are going to play against them in the last round. And then you can have a situation where FTC might go out, although they're three points behind. So uh, I was more looking about FTC Vipers because I think FTC, they maybe they need at least one point. And I don't know if Lickich are ready to play. I don't think so. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a tough one for them. Yeah, yeah. I think I, th I think that's a crucial game for for FTC, uh, especially because now they have ten points. Cream it's with eleven points, and Vipers with thirteen. Um, I don't see Cream winning in Denmark. That's that's my opinion. Of course, everything can happen, but I think that Cream has lived a decreasing. Um, yeah. performances uh, from the beginning to the competition until now. Um, and, and I think this FTC Vipers game, it's going to be very, very important for the future of this group to see yeah. what's going to happen with the uh, last teams of the, of the group. 100%. And that's where I would say uh, we will have a look at that next week. Um, but for now, uh, Victor, your nose is not going easy on you. That's why uh, I would say let's cut it here, boys. We've had a uh, great talk here with Nedim Remili and the EHF Champions League women uh, has never been, a, been away, but the Machine Secret EHF Champions League men is coming back there as well. And uh, that's why I would say Let's look forward to that. And uh, any closing words from you guys? Um, Actually, happy to have Victor back and him in some way representing Denmark by wearing a Danish brand on his T-shirt. And uh, I think that's a nice uh, gesture from you, Victor. <laughs> it was just a blink of, of, of an eye to you. Uh, after, after, winning, after winning the first head-to-head -head of the Who Am I? I'm leading. I'm leading the the scoreboard, uh, and my closing words, my closing words would be that just guys, keep training on paddle because you still owe me a dinner. <laughs> we do, we do. Uh, but uh, to be fair oh here, Victor, God. I'm I'm putting my money on you because Victor is winning too much in uh, the uh, <laughs> the atmosphere of this <laughs> podcast or these shows. Uh, pack my bag, okay. paddle. I want your prediction. Uh, Uh, you want the prediction. That prediction. is true. That is true. Uh, yeah. By just a small margin against me there, actually. Um, I failed to score any points uh, throughout the last match days. That was a terrible feeling there. Uh, but still, I'm putting my money on you, boy. Uh, you could do it. You could do it. And uh, go grab that victory next week for, uh, from, uh, from Victor. Uh, but uh, he will surely come prepared. And that's where I would say thank you for tuning in. And uh, let's hear each other again next week when it's time to talk handball again. Ball across to Dylan, now he double in flight! Oh, what a start! Ooh, yeah. Into the net. He does it again! Yeah.